With Trio's FNCS coming soon, so many of you guys have been hollering at us to make a video on finding teammates. And I totally get where you guys are coming from. Finding the right teammates can be a burdensome process. It really is. And so it's just not you, all right? A lot of pros even go through this. So today, let's talk about how to find the perfect trio, where to look, how to build team chemistry, all right? The types of players to avoid and really how to practice with your new trio to achieve the best results as soon as you can. What's going on, guys? This is not your ordinary guy. No, this is your motivation guy. Good news, I was born to motivate you. I was born to inspire you to never quit, to always be determined. Your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. And if results are what you care about, look, one session with the Pro Guys coach can be enough to boost your placements and have you winning more games. Coaching is like no longer reserved for the pros, all right? So to save time and rank up quick, you gotta check out our pro coaching in the description link below. Bunch of crunch army, where you at? It's time to sit back, relax, and grab some of my favorite candy. What is that, y'all? It's that bunch of crunch. And let's get this going. All right, so first things first, where is the best place to look for a trio? Man, well, assuming that you don't have contacts that you could just go to first, competitive Discord servers are the best place to look. Servers like Atlantis Scrimps, East or EU Open. And of course, our own Pro Guys Discord, link is in the description, check it out. Okay, so for example, our Discord has looking for group channels for every reason to help narrow down your search. And one of these channels, you can post whether you're looking for, you know, just one teammate or a team to join. You can also sift through other players' posts and then message anybody that looks like they would fit. But before you go to make a post, you need to know that being convincing matters a ton. So we see so many posts in our LFG channels that just don't persuade well enough. Like, it's not enough just to say that you play on Xbox and that you're good at building. Because anybody serious about finding teammates will probably just ignore you due to a lack of info. Instead, listing your goals, so important, like previous placements and even your power ranking can tell others a lot more about what kind of teammate you can be. But if you don't have any placements or a spot on the power ranking leaderboard, don't worry, it's okay. That's when you should list specific trio skills that you could bring to the team. For example, are you a leader that specializes in calling shots and keeping the team coordinated? What about your fighting skills? You know, are they what you take pride in the most? Or are you more of like a support player who isn't afraid just to hinder your own abilities for the team's greater good? Listing these skills can do a ton and really helping others decide whether or not that you're an excellent fit for the team. So if you don't include them, don't be surprised when nobody sends you a DM. So a typical looking for group posts should look a little bit like this. First, say you're looking for a trio for FNCS, of course. Next, talk about experience, man. Your past placements, you know, how long you've been scrimming and your Fortnite track or power ranking if you're not at that level yet don't be afraid to say it after that you should list the system and input device that you play on as well as your goals goals yo they are crucial to mention because it really just lets people know whether you're taking this seriously or if you're just looking to have fun which means you're gonna get better suited teammates which brings me to the next thing that you should be mentioning your availability are you planning to you know play six hours a day every day or are you more of like a weekends only kind of a guy you don't have to be too exact but at least say how many days a week that you can play you know to give a rough estimate optionally you can list things like age and language preferences and the region that you play in but other than that that's pretty much it all right you've given a significant amount of info which should help you find an appropriate team to play on now but that's only the beginning <laughs> next typically comes a tryout period where you and your new potential teammates will have to decide whether or not the team works so let's talk about that Anytime you try with new teammates, it's quite rare to see immediate results because typically there's an adjustment period where everyone is still learning the small quirks of, you know, their teammates. Things like their play style, you know, what their calls mean, urgency level conveyed through their voice, and so on and so forth, all right? So if you don't pop off during the first day of playing arena and scrims, all I'm saying is, that's expected. Don't take it as a sign that you need to look for new teammates, all right? Slow down, be patient. For all you know, just a few more days of practicing would've got you guys into the groove of things. So definitely give your new teammates a fair chance because the longer that you can stick together, the better you're going to perform. Don't just like ditch them and just snake right off the back unless you really just notice a few glaring red, like red signs. <laughs> but we're gonna get into that later on. Right now, what I do wanna talk about is team chemistry, so important, which is something 
one that you hear about a lot, but one of the things that is so important for a team is chemistry. Team chemistry is essentially like how you and your teammates get along. And having good chemistry is somewhat necessary once you've decided you're okay with teammates you got. It really helps the team be more productive, you know, to stay focused on the bigger picture. And it makes it so that no one takes it too personally when things go wrong. So one example that I can give you guys of amazing chemistry was Unknown's winning squad back in Chapter 2 Season 1. Unknown was with Ronaldo, Avery, and Kez, and just by watching, you could just tell that these guys were terrific friends. They never really got too upset and never really lashed out. Instead, they were chill, and they understood mistakes happened, and ultimately, it led to a very successful squad, which kind of goes to show how vital chemistry can be when it comes to seeing results. But I'm gonna admit that team chemistry isn't 100% necessary, all right? Point in case being Aqua and Nyrox, who went into the Fortnite World Cup already wanting to split up, but won anyway. But still, Team chemistry is still like a pretty well established concept in sports and even in the business world. So do your best to build it, all right? Some ways that you can is by hanging out or just playing games other than Fortnite with them or by talking about school or work or family life, sports, hobbies, whatever it is, you guys just relate. You know, you build that friendship as much as you can. And I'm telling you that chemistry is going to grow and you are going to see better results. So before we move on, just a reminder that many of our coaches specialize in trios. So if you want the best advice straight from the top players, check out our VOD review service. You upload a replay and in under 24 hours, which is absolutely crazy, you're delivered awesome pro tips. It's that easy. You got to try it today. Link is in the description. So I mentioned those red flags earlier, right? These are really, really big. These red flags, I'm talking about glaring problems that some players exhibit. And honestly, I say anytime that you see them, you probably wanna reconsider having them as your teammate. The first big red flag is tilting. Not necessarily tilting in general or at the game, but tilting toward teammates. That's pretty unacceptable. I'm sorry, I, I, I can't do it, like I can't do it. And maybe, you know, I, I could see it happening in the heat of the moment, but ideally you want a constructive environment for growth. One where you guys aren't yelling at each other. Yes, mistakes happen, I get it. So it's better to be a part of a team that works together to solve them, not the ones that tear each other down every time a mistake happens. A second red flag is someone that shifts blame. Recognizing your mistakes, guys, and faults is a requirement to improve, and that's it. But speaking from experience, so many people I've played and just worked with make mistakes, you know, and then tend to shift the blame on others as soon as they can. And what that does is it messes up the entire chemistry of the team. They don't accept responsibility and never improve as a result. So if you see this trait in your new teammates, trust me, you might want to reconsider. The third red flag would be any liars. Oh my goodness. <laughs> like maybe you find out that your new teammate lied about their placements or earnings or something like that. That's kind of weird if you ask me. And immediately you should see that as a sign that they're not trustworthy. Whether or not it's worth dropping, you know, that's up to you. But you never know how their liar attitude might come and bite you later on, all right? All right, lastly, this may seem like a joke, but you should avoid teammates without two-factor authorization on their accounts. What I mean is don't avoid them, but make sure that they have it on. We've actually read stories from players joining new teams and then they go to queue for a cash cup and then boom, they can't play because someone forgot to enable it. That's a big error if you ask me. But that's pretty much it for teammates that you should avoid, all right? Let us know in the comments, you know, other types of players that you see as big red flags. Now onto the juicy part, here we go. Let's look at effective, practical ways to train and strategize with your new trio. Who's ready for this? Let's go. So in our Discord and many others, we have a channel for finding 1v1s, 2v2s, and 3v3s. And we totally recommend spending at least a quarter of your practice time doing Storm Wars and realistic 3v3s against other trios. These two are the most realistic practice methods to really help build your team's coordination, comms, and strategies for fights. If you're going to 1v1 your teammate, <laughs> for quicker practice, you can always 1v1 your teammates as well. And more often than not, you can pick up on techniques or strategies that you haven't even seen before for. But after you're creative, all right, you got to play actual battle royale. This should take up a majority of your practice time, guys. And here is, you know, how we look at it. To practice W King, head into pubs or arena. I know that everybody is a pro that can just maintain champs while W King, so you don't have to do it every game. But W King every now and then can be a fantastic way to really, really develop not only your mechanics, but also your game sense and fights. How would you know if you're never in that situation, right? You need to get in that situation. Half your battle royale practice should be arena. 
but the other half should be scrims where you'll work on concepts like rotations you know storm surge and learning when and when not to take fights if you look at any pro all the successful ones grinded scrims so don't underestimate their usefulness especially when it comes to success in trios pro guys discord currently doesn't host scrims so we'll leave a few you know reputable scrim servers for you guys in the description so your last small bit of practice time should be spent strategizing that means vod reviewing and just brainstorming new ideas like loot paths loadouts and so on and so forth some pros say vod reviewing isn't helpful but it definitely can be in a team setting replays give you guys a better understanding of where mistakes were made right and by watching them as a team you've got three brains that can come up with the solutions so even though we're probably just too lazy and we would probably just rather just hop off for the night even vod reviewing one regretful loss for 15 minutes can do wonders and solving the issues that made it happen in the first place So to sum things up, if you're looking for a trio for the FNCS, go to our Discord or one of the other competitive scrim discords and leave a convincing post describing your skills, you know, past experience and your goals to let others know what you're bringing to the table, all right? Avoid toxic teammates like liars, remember that, <laughs> blamers, tilters, and anything else that won't contribute to your growth. Instead, look for teammates that you can't see yourself just chilling in Discord with after a night of games. Once you found your team, I suggest, you know, a tryout period of at least a few days where you can scrim, play arena, and really develop strategies to get a better idea whether the team will work. But take your time, be patient, all right? Don't just give up, you know, after, <laughs> after a couple of losses, you know, keep going, and they might be the perfect fit, you never know. All right, guys, once again, this is your motivation guy. That's right, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen, the guy who was born to motivate you to be great, not only in this game, but also in life. Every mount every obstacle every negative thing that is in front of you yo it's time for you to jump over that thing how do you jump over that thing by not giving up by keep going and eventually you'll be able to jump over it all right so guys if you guys found this tips helpful slap a thumbs up on the video and if you want to keep improving at fortnite don't forget to sub and turn that bell button on bunch of crunch army where you at <laughs> let's go let's do this man and keep eating that bunch of crunch and let's get this going